Welcome to Dan's On Fandoms, I'm Dan. We are officially in wave 2 of phase 1 of the High Republic and I am thoroughly loving it. Not only has the Rising Storm been phenomenal, but Kevin Scott's High Republic comic series continues to be just all around awesome and the last issue was no exception. There's several things I want to discuss about this issue so obviously, spoilers ahead for the High Republic number 6. Let's first start with the ending and the big reveal we got. We learned that after several months had lapsed since the last issue and the Jedi struggled to contain the Dren gear, Keeve and Skier were able to telepathically connect to the Dren Gear's neural root system, which allowed Keeve to locate the Great Progenitor. Keeve was able to learn that the Great Progenitor is on a planet in wild space called Molita, setting up the next issue, which will undoubtedly see the Jedi head to that planet. Aside from setting up the potential for the Jedi to possibly contain and or eradicate the Dren Gear, I think this issue planted several seeds that are going to blossom later on as we continue deeper into the phases of the High Republic, the first of which is Keeve and Skier's interactions with each other. We learned at the beginning of the issue that Skier has been incapacitated and unconscious since we left off in issue 5. The hold the Dren Gear have on the Trandoshan Jedi Master has been kept at bay by a stasis field but it's not cured him of the Dren Gear presence within his body. After a large Dren Gear attack on the Outer Rim planet of Davak resulted in essentially the entire Jedi Order and their allies the Hutt Cartel attacked the sentient plants before they overran the planet, Keeve telepathically connected with Skier, allowing her and her former master to communicate with each other through the Force. Once the telepathic connection began, Skier and Keeve embraced each other with a hug, prompting the Trandoshan to state that hugging and having the emotional connection that the two share with each other was not the Jedi way. I think this one panel is a big one and for a few reasons. There's been much speculation about the High Republic shedding light on the Lost 20, which were a group of 20 Jedis who left the Jedi Order at some point throughout its history. In the canon novel Dooku Jedi Lost, it's mentioned that one of the Lost Jedi was Jedi Jedi Master Trennis. Keeping this in mind, when we see Keeve and Skier embrace each other and the Jedi Master tells his former Padawan that doing so wasn't the Jedi way, I think this is further proof that Keeve and probably Skier will wind up being Jedi that will leave the Order and become a part of the Lost 20. One of the things I've loved about the High Republic so far is seeing the differences between the Jedi Order of the High Republic and the Jedi Order of the prequels and, although we've seen the High Republic era Jedi seem to be more lenient with emotional attachment, the Order still frowns upon deeper level emotional connections. And although we haven't seen Elzar Man in this comic series, he's appeared in Light of the Jedi and the Rising Storm, and he and our homegirl Avar Chris definitely harbor feelings for each other and that's something that has affected Elzar. On top of Skier and Keeve's interactions, we're seeing how the Dren Gear have stretched the Jedi Order thin, and that's not even considering what the Nile are up to in the Outer Rim and the mayhem they've caused. Between Jedi Knights losing faith in the Order, its teachings, and questioning or leaving the Order entirely, the Drengear swarming the Republic, and the chaos that the Nile unleash on the Outer Rim, it's very easy to see how these events could lead to the Jedi Order becoming more rigid and dogmatic by the time of the prequels and their eventual downfall. Another easter egg we got is the mentioning of the Nightmare Conjunction. We learn that Jedi Master Astala Maru was able to find information on the wild space planet Mulita by searching ancient records that date back to the days of something called the Nightmare Conjunction. In Dooku Jedi Lost, which was also written by Kevin Scott, God, we learn that the Nightmare Conjunction was said to have been tamed by Darth Krall, a former Jedi Master who fell to the dark side of the Force and became a Sith Lord. Darth Krall is set to appear in the High Republic number 7 and I cannot freaking wait to dive into that issue. I would absolutely love more stories delving into the Old Republic, but I'm especially dying for more stories that feature the Sith and new Sith Lords. One other non-Easter egg thing I loved about this issue and in past issues is seeing Keeve's ability to connect with beings through the Force. Force. I love how it's been depicted in this series so far and I think it's such a cool ability. All in all, The High Republic number 6 was really solid and the series continues to be fantastic. I'm really looking forward to the next issue and can't wait to see Darth Krall and what we'll learn about the Sith Lord. But what do you guys think? What's your thoughts on The High Republic number 6? Let us know down in the comments. If you like this video, please help out the channel by hitting that like button and making sure you subscribe. Follow the channel on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all at Dan's on Fandom. Thanks for watching and stay nerdy.